Let's take a look at the overall temperature anomalies for the month of July and overall for one of the hotter months of the season. It's been predominantly on the cool side for those areas in California, especially along the coastal areas. It has been somewhat above average for those areas across the Pacific Northwest because you have been experiencing overall drier conditions for them. But if you once you swing in across the middle part of the country, we have seen several cool shots of air, which left the temperatures overall average or even slightly below average the further south you got with all the rain they got there in Texas. But once you swung across the eastern half of the country, that's where you've seen some of the above average temperatures across the Ohio Valley, especially seen an uptick over the for those areas into the mid-Atlantic, as well as into the Northeast. And the Southeast have been slightly above average as well, but that long anticipated colder shot of air for you know August standards came in and swung those temperatures southbound again. And that left the start of, the start of August on the predominantly cooler side for August standards with that 10 to 15, almost upwards to 20 degree temperature drop at times and left some really pleasant, even some early signs of fall, even some fall-like temperatures in a way, at least for a brief period of time. But overall for the next 10 days, it you know, it overall, it doesn't look terribly too bad. We do have the, the warmer air building across Canada and that cooler shot's gotta go somewhere. So that's gonna leave several degrees below average over the next 10 days across a good part of the, of the Northwest regions. Yes, you're gonna continue to remain high and dry and elevated heat uh, across the desert Southwest. But for the most part, where it's going to be overall rainier and wet with these tropical lows along the coast and just these these cooler shots of air is going to left this region, the southeast and much of the eastern seaboard across those areas in the next 10 days on the below average side. So it's really been just kind of over the top into Canada where you're going to be seeing those well above average temperature anomalies for the next 10 days so if you look at the precipitation outlook for the next 10 days it continues to kind of remain high and dry really kind of where it's been the monsoonal flow will continue for those areas across new mexico and then we'll have these subtle shots of uh, systems that's coming across the middle of the part of the country but it's really just the southeast and much of florida and getting along the carolinas where you're going to be seeing those abundance amount of rains and those flood flood concerns for this region over the next 10 days. And then we take a look at the overall tropics. It's been fairly quiet. We've had three named storms and all three of those storms have been a named storm for less than 24 hours. And, and yet again, we have another storm. This could potentially be Dexter. The National Hurricane Center has elevated this to a 50% probability of this taking another name of Dexter in the next couple of days. And then further south, we have another area of interest that we're actually watching as well. But if you take a look at the overall trend anomalies on the latest guidance, this definitely looks to enhance and becomes Tropical Storm Dexter. But all indications are this will continue to race out into the open waters of Atlantic and not really affect anybody um, from this particular system. But it does, in fact, look to be taking a named storm by the time we get into early next week. And there's also that low pressure will be tracking. That's where we have that 30% probability down further south. And also, if you look at the longer range guidance as in about seven to 10 days from now, this could in fact even become a hurricane that would likely be airing at the time. But again, as you can see, it is well out in the open waters of the Atlantic and not, again, not gonna be impacting anybody any landmass whatsoever so we could be looking at two more named storms but both of those are going to be a fish storm over the next seven to ten days and if we extend that into that second half of august we kind of particularly see the trend overall continuing from what we've seen it's going to be continue to remain on the cooler side across a good part of california and above average for the pacific northwest and of course the desert southwest but it's that middle part of the country where i do feel you'll have systems in place where likely severe weather comes back across the northern plains and the ohio valley 
overall that will leave you on the uh, average temperature side if you just average those out for the second half of the month of August and where it has been wet I think it's going to continue to remain well above average across a good part of the southeast and to the Carolinas with more just tropical downpours inundating this region but where the storms are going to be coming back with a vengeance as that ridge will slightly build across the south again uh, into that second into that second week going to that third week of August is across the north that's that's when we look to see severe weather likely coming back into play for a good part of the central and northern plains across Iowa back into Minnesota again and that would likely continue into that third week of August as, as well as the ridge will be pr pr predominantly across the south and then that will put the Ridge Rider effect and kind of the uh, the overall setup with the storm track across Iowa again and into northern Illinois, as well as those areas into Indiana that likely will sneak down into the Kentucky region, getting into Tennessee as well. And if we take a look at the overall temperature anomalies as far as the sea surface temperatures, that trend is what we've been talking about going out of that end zone neutral, heading into that weak La Nina, going into that fall months, especially into winter. But notice all also the predominant warm blob up there into the NPO, the North Pacific Oscillation Region. This is extremely warm waters up there and that's one of the reasons why we're going to continue to remain on the very active side for severe weather but we'll also trend towards that weak la nina and this will also pick up a lot of volatility uh, as we head into those fall months and heading into winter and then what's what's interesting if we take a look at some of the longer range guidances uh, so yes this is the month of August typically the hottest time of the year and as you see the Arctic Oscillation Index predominantly keeps us on the neutral side across these regions but the trend looks to be favorable going negative as we flip the calendar into the month of September and going into October as we get deeper into those fall months it's definitely showing some early signs of at least allowing some of those cooler shots of air coming down from Canada and entering into to the lower 48 with that predominant negative AO likely developing as we trend into those fall months. And if we extend it even further and take a look at another tele teleconnection of the EPO, your Eastern Pacific Oscillation, Yes, you can definitely see on the longer range extended guidances as we head into that month of September and especially as we head towards fall, that noticeable downtrend of a negative EPO likely trying to develop here as we head into the fall months. And that again would be an early sign of some of the strong, stronger indications uh, of some cooler shots of air and especially what what was interesting when the overall european seasonal guidance is updated on august the first and this is the blend for those november december and january months heading into late fall heading into early winter notice the high pressure that's really starting to build across the aleutian islands if this high pressure is able to build further north into alaska this would create colder air building across Siberia and then would likely set up cross polar flow as we head into late fall into the early signs of winter that would be a negative EPO likely to developing so it's already showing those signs and the overall European extended guidances and then it made confirmation when the seasonal guidances came out and said yeah we've got some definite signs that potentially an early EPO negative EPO would likely develop that is definitely a colder look for the lower 48 and the and the overall outlook the snapshot kind of looks like this I mean you would have a ridge of high pressure building south of the Aleutian Islands this would likely lift further north and again if this is able to lift 
farther farther north, then that would likely spill over some Siberia air and create what's known as cross polar flow. This is a would be a colder look for an overall colder pattern for the lower 48 with a negative EPO likely trying to develop into the longer range that would likely send cooler or even colder shots of air into the into the fall later fall months into those early winter months as well so this is definitely something interesting to keep an eye at and definitely some of the longer range guidances is kind of hinting at a like somewhat cooler late later fall likely to develop and maybe an early shot of, of a colder colder look to winter at least to start winter which is definitely something i'll be keeping an eye on as we get deeper into fall heading into winter so guys i appreciate you watching do like this video definitely hit the subscribe button and catch my next update why i protect you before and after the storm